here we go. Uh, welcome to Choosing Your Path, writing for movies or for TV. You know, it's no secret that there are more career opportunities for film and television writers today than ever before. But what's not so well known is that a career of writing for the movies is very different from a career of writing for television. So those differences, <clears throat> as well as the differences between the two crafts of writing, for television and feature films are what we're going to talk about here today because with the career path you choose which career path you choose for yourself well that can make all the difference um hi i'm suzanne herrera mccullough and i'm bob mccullough uh, between us suzanne and i have written more than 300 produced film and television scripts and that's not even the scripts we wrote that never sold right so uh, we've had more than our share of success in the business, but we've also experienced the usual frustrations and the disappointments that come with writing for television or for motion pictures. Uh, things can get pretty frustrating just trying to figure out where to focus your efforts. And that's why we're here today to give you some insights into choosing the right direction for you. And as, as we all know, you know, the COVID pandemic basically shut down every movie theater in the country for nearly well, actually more than a full year. Uh, and it, that had a major effect on the movie going audience. You know, everybody was basically forced to turn to their television sets for their cinema entertainment. And suddenly every producer and network and streaming outlet, they all quickly needed a lot of scripts to produce that programming. There was quite a scramble. Um, right, right. <clears throat> that's also uh, just happened to be when the smartphones seemed to show up in the hands of every kid on the block with all the programming being streamed onto their four inch screens. Today, millennials and Gen Z, the demographic which is historically drove movie attendance, is more focused on social media and short form content on TikTok than they are on TV or movies. Right. We have a we have a 15 year old at home and we can't even get her to go to a movie. It's all on her phone. And to sort of pull a, that audience away from their smartphones, today's releases are the, in the in the movie theaters. They're featuring the superhero action, the big budget effects, and of course, the over the top violence. With rare exception, the older generation audience is really not the target of studio marketing departments. A couple of those rare exceptions came this past year, but I think that was because of the subject matter, Top Gun, which is one of your favorites, Saw Maver three times. Maverick did amazing business with ticket sales of over $700 million. But I, I think that was because of the audience responded to both Tom Cruise and their memories of the original Top Gun. Right, right. We've we've seen them both many times. And then, of course, another favorite of ours, there, there was Elvis. And it was a big hit with Baby Boomers, but it still fell far behind Top Gun with ticket sales of just over $150 million. And let's not forget Steven Spielberg's remake of West Side Story. Cost over $100 million to make, and it sold $38 million in tickets. So aside from Top Gun, last year's movie business was dominated by big budget superhero and special effect movies like Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, Doctor Strange in the multiverse, uh, of Madness, Avatar, The Way of Water, and another sequel to Thor. Another sequel, yes. So the point is that the audience is constantly evolving, which means you as a writer need to think about where you are as a writer and what your personal storytelling tastes are because your scripts are a product and the buyers only commit to product they believe they can then sell to an audience. So let's talk about the actual writing of a screenplay versus writing for TV because they're actually two completely different forms with distinct differences. Absolutely. So the, the first difference is clearly, I think, their narrative structure. Feature films really are designed to be told in a three-act structure consisting of the setup, confrontation, and resolution. This is the structure that allows filmmakers to create a cohesive story that can actually be seen or told, enjoyed under two hours. On the other hand, television shows require a more complex st structure that allows for multi-episode arcs, character development, and multi-storylines uh, unless you're writing for an ongoing serial like Yellowstone. The narrative structure in TV shows is episodic. 
meaning that each has its own beginning, middle, and end, with everything resolved within a single episode. Right. There, there are also great differences in the way characters are developed in a feature film as opposed to television. Uh, in a movie, audience have a very limited time to get, get to know your characters uh, you know, completely. Character development is condensed and accelerated in features that can get pretty challenging because you need to provide both backstories and character arcs that re that viewers can relate to and root for within the film's runtime. On the other hand, <clears throat> writing for a television show gives you plenty of time to develop characters. You can develop relationships and complex plot lines, and hopefully over many, many seasons, uh, long running shows give writers room to explore characters in depth. Uh, you get to introduce new sides to them and you can create emotional connections with the audience. That's how a show like, I hate to say it, that's how a show like Grey's Anatomy can hang on to its audience for nearly 20 years. People in my family love Grey's Anatomy. Another big difference between writing for TV or features is the pacing of the writing. In a feature screenplay where the story is generally confined to two hours or less, every line of dialogue, every scene, every page of your script needs to flow quickly and smoothly. There's actually no room for a slow or tedious moment. Uh, you cannot have the reader, and that's what we're really talking about here, getting readers to like your script. You can't have a reader set your, side, your script aside uh, or leave an audience kind of dozing off or wondering if the popcorn is ready. And that's why our mantra at the Wiki Screenplay Contest is that your first 10 pages are the most important pages of your script. By contrast, a television script usually operates at a much slower pace, since there's much more time available to explore the story and to build on the world and the characters within each episode. Because So TV writers really have the luxury to build their stories slowly, and the viewer gets a chance to immerse themselves fully in the narrative before moving on to the next episode. So while it might not look like it to the casual observer, writing for television requires different skills and a different mindset from writing feature screenplays. And we'll be getting into some of that a little bit later. Right, but so first, I guess let's dive into the whole screenwriting thing. You must remember that studios are motivated by one thing, profits. If you're writing a screenplay that has a potential for attracting a large audience and generating profits, then you're on the right track. On the other hand, a non-commercial script is not very likely to attract the serious financing it takes to make a profitable movie. Right. Even a low-budget movie still costs a lot of money. So that said, the marketplace for those non-theatrical independent films, the movies that will never make it to your local multiplex, those are the ones that show up on your TV screen. And that market is probably stronger today than ever before, simply because of the explosion of all the streaming distribution channels. A year ago, Netflix was throwing money at producers simply because they wanted to dominate the streaming world with product. As a result, hundreds of films were produced with some pretty sizable budgets. Big budgets came out of Netflix and really turned things upside down. And that trend is really only continuing with places like Hulu, Amazon, Peacock, Disney, and now even YouTube is competing for the eyeballs uh, that used to watch movies in neighborhood theaters. I'm sure everyone is overwhelmed by how many channels there are to watch uh, TV. It's just crazy. We, we, spend, we spend half the night trying to decide what to watch, and by then it's too late to watch anything. But spec scripts still aren't easy to sell. The impact of superheroes like Thor and Spider-Man and, and intellectual properties like Harry Potter and uh, and Lord of the Rings has made the epic, the spec screenplay market tougher than ever because those projects are almost always written as a, on an assignment to establish writers with a track record of commercial success. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be writing a great screenplay. Even if it's not a superhero action piece, there's a market for it. But what it does mean is that you should write the best possible script because what the odds are, it will never sell or get produced, but it then becomes a very valuable calling card that you that can actually help you get hired as a writer with an assignment. You might wind up writing the next Spider-Man or Harry Potter. As a screenwriter starting out, you're going to need uh, to do what I call unpaid homework. That means you'll need examples of of work that demonstrates your ability to write. And you might have some great connections. 
or you might be a master networker, or you might even have a family friend with the money to make a movie. That would be nice. That would be, that would, that's a good family friend. But, but you know, if you don't have a script polished and ready to show, that's none of that's going to matter. If you only have the one script you want to sell, then you need to be sure it has a strong leading roles that will appeal to actors and that it has a strong hook that's obvious to any reader within the first dozen pages, sort of like a movie trailer that makes you want to see more. So if, if your ambition is to build a long-term career as a feature screenwriter, you're going to need more than just one script. The first thing you're always hear from anybody interested in your script or in you as a writer is always going to be, what else have you got? What does that mean? It means you need a strong portfolio. You need several completed screenplays that show your distinctive voice, as well as some range of story types. The work life of a screenwriter can look pretty attractive, although it can also be pretty solitary. You can set your own working schedule and you can generally work from anywhere in the world with today's technology. Most screenwriters are able to work from a home office or from any laptop, wherever they are. Of course, the dream is that you can work from the beach. Uh, it's not really That's not really going to happen because people want pages delivered on time. So when it, but when it comes to actually getting paid as a screenwriter, that's where that solid portfolio of work can get you on the list. That's a list of approved writers for any particular producer or studios. And the list is different at every studio. If you're an action writer or a sci-fi specialist, for example, you might become an approved writer at Warner Brothers. Or if you're an animation writer, you might get on the list at Disney. What usually happens because spec script sales are so rare today is that a producer will read something of yours and then invite you to a meeting where they'll share their idea for a film they want to produce. If you want the producer, it, you know, if you and the producer click, you might get hired to write the script. It's uh, clicking always helps. That's and, and then aside from that, there are what's called open writing assignments at every studio. They're basically invitations to writers to pitch for specific projects already in development with the studio producer. This often involves intellectual property that a studio owns. They've invested money in it, like a book or the rights to someone's life story. The problem with open writing assignments is that the studios will invite several writers on their list of approved screenwriters. You could be pitching your heart out on somebody else's project and taking meetings that go nowhere while you're not writing your own stuff. Now, let's, let, let's talk about television writing as a career and why it's so different from screenwriting. Well, yeah, we, we avoid those cattle calls when we can. Uh, and one of the key differences uh, in television writing from the film feature film world in, in the world of movies the director is the quarterback and the producer is kind of like the team owner more often than not once the producer and the director have your script uh, the writer then takes a seat on the bench but in television it's different the writer becomes the quarterback that's the person with the vision who actually brings characters to life of course, the world of television writing has changed a lot, too. Up until a few years ago, a TV show would produce 22 uh, episodes every season, and new shows were developed during pilot season. That meant if you were writing on a show, you had nearly a full year of employment. With the, rest, with the recent dominance of cable and streamers, shows now get an offer for 6, 8, or 13 episodes, and we've recently seen some heavily promoted shows get canceled after just four, four episodes. Which is kind of a shame. You get hooked into a show as an audience and suddenly the show disappears. Uh, and sometimes it's never, the, it's really not always the fault of the writer. There are a lot of politics involved and things, you know. But th what this means is that in, in order to generate a solid year's income, a writer needs to land a spot working on more than one show each year. So it's critical that you do some serious networking and be able to build a reputation as a dependable go-to staff writer and a real team player. Writing for TV isn't only about the writing. To work on a series as a staff writer, you need to be good in the room. That means you need to be kind of a person uh, that producers, network execs, and other writers on the show want to spend time with. You need a good sense of good story sense, the ability to communicate clearly and to be ready to collaborate constantly. Writing for TV, even more than writing features, it's a serious grind. If, but if you're the kind of person who likes to be home for dinner, 
with the kids or you don't like working on somebody else's ideas or if you cringe when someone changes what you've written, television may not be the career for you. One of the great advantages of writing for television is that you're rarely alone. Even a short run series requires a handful of writers working together in a collegial collaborative way. Not only is the is there endless supply of snack food pretty good in most writers' rooms, uh, you'll generally be working with people very much like yourself. Right. I mean, if you're a people person, writing, uh, working in television can be a lot of fun. But again, you're always going to be dealing with some crazy pressures, things like bone crushing work schedules, the incessant rewrites, and of course, dealing with the network and studio notes, not to mention the egos of everybody involved. Maybe it's time to talk about the elephant in the room, ageism. It's definitely an issue for television writers and particularly for middle-aged writers. That's sadly true. In the world of feature films, there's a long list of screenwriters who broke into the business and had prolific careers well into middle age and beyond. For example, a man named David Seidler won an Oscar for writing The King's Speech, and he was 74 years old at the time. Uh, the writer Cormac McCarthy, a novelist, well, he wrote No Country for Old Men in his 60s. And, a, and Courtney Hunt was 40 years old when she broke in with a script called Winter's Bone, a very, an award winner. And, and the list goes on. Uh, the age of a feature writer, as long as he or she can present themselves with enthusiasm and very high quality work, their age is really not an issue. The flip side of that is in television. Uh, that's because the executives of the studios and networks who have approval of all writing staff hires are generally under the age of 40. Yes, uh, there's a logical, illogical assumption that older writers really aren't in touch with today's TikTok inspired audience and that, quote, older writers are either unwilling or unable to maintain the pace and schedule of working on a TV series. That prejudice is certainly out there, but there are ways to work around that. First of all, every writer should focus on his or her strengths. If you've been writing for a while and you are you happen to be over 50, for example, there's no doubt that you're a better writer that you, than you were in years gone by. There are certain assets to being over 50 writer, including things like maturity, experience, better writing craft, and life skills a younger writer simply just doesn't have. Now, this might all sound very superficial, but there's also a lot to be said for maintaining a youthful attitude and outlook. Working with the younger generation of executives and producers requires their attitude. It's an attitude and appearance and an outlook of kind of being young at heart. Of course, the best way to avoid the issue of ageism is just to simply write a great script that simply transcends the issue because nobody's going to turn up their noses at an amazing pilot or a spec script for a hit TV show. So let's, why don't we review the pros and cons of screenwriting versus writing for television? We'll start by summarizing all the advantages of a career in television. Okay. Uh, once you have established yourself as a TV writer, the career is easier to sustain. As a television writer, you have a more structured life. When you're on the staff of a show, you usually have a nice office space and a regular paycheck and other writers around you. And there's simply more jobs available for television writers, whether it's on a series for the broadcast networks, the cable channels, or the streaming outlets. There isn't a rigid format for many television series today. Many TV shows push the boundaries of what's expected from both structure and character standpoints, which allows for more creative freedom. Right. I mean, actually, television several years ago, Breaking Bad, I think, really broke the mold as well. Uh, and it allows writers a lot of latitude in terms of structuring a season, even structuring an episode. And over, over the past decade or so, the uh, development of writers' rooms has created sort of a career ladder where there are real opportunities to move up from a writer's assistant to a junior writer and all the way up to showrunner. If you're a TV writer with a reputation for good work, you'll often move from one series to another. You're not necessarily stuck with the same show or even the same genre of show. Right. It can be a lot of fun, particularly if you have uh, ADD or something. You know, if you like action, television is often a lot of action. The majority of TV producers actually start out as writers. So in television, it's generally the vision of the writer, not the director, that winds up on the screen. And when writers are promoted to producer, 
they get to call the shots creatively, not only in terms of the scripts, but often in terms of casting and overall creative control. By contrast, in the world of feature films, writers are always in secondary position to the director. It's the director who gets creative control and all the credit for a movie success. Of course, when a movie flops, the director takes the hit, but somehow manages to place the blame on the writer. We've seen that a thousand times. Mm -hmm. Dire directors will take a script, make changes they want to make, the, the movie fails, and then they say, oh, well, it was the script. Well, of course, because they monkeyed around with the script. But as a TV writer, um, another advantage is when you're employed on a show, you can always go off uh, at night or during breaks or on weekends, and you can write another pilot script or even that screenplay you've been thinking about for the last couple of years. Once you've proven that you can do the job in television, everybody, even by working at the lowest level of writer assistant, you're in. If you've been good in the room and have de delivered good work on a tight schedule, you'll very likely be considered for future assignments and jobs. So writing for TV can be a pretty good gig, but there are also some drawbacks. So let's talk mm -hmm. about those for a minute. Sure. There are definitely some things to consider before rushing off to write that spec TV pilot. Age plays a factor in breaking in as a TV writer. You need to be in the writer's room. That means you need to live in LA, New York, or Atlanta, uh, with LA being the place where most of the jobs are. You'll need to start at the bottom of the ladder. Sometimes it takes years to work up from junior writer to staff writer to story editor, maybe to even to producer to showrunner. Another problem is that writer's rooms and climbing that ladder can be a very competitive environment. This comes into your people skills. It takes the ability to write well and quickly, as well as some political skill to move up the ladder. Comedy shows are particularly difficult political environments and often require very long hours in the office and you where you get to laugh at everybody else's jokes to feel like you're part of the group. And, and you're also often creatively constrained because you're writing for characters that were created by somebody else. Well, that's quite a list, but let me add a couple of other uh, realities faced by a working television writer. You need to have a great ear for dialogue because TV scripts are dialogue-driven interior productions with limited visual scope as a significant factor in the storyline. You're always juggling multiple storylines, A, B, and C stories, to hold the audience through a season. You can't be overly protective of your ideas. Other writers will take your ideas and get the credit for them. You might come up with a great character or a killer line of a dialogue, and it winds up in somebody else's script. With their name on the script, right? And those long hours can get pretty long. Yeah. You need to show up early, and you need to leave late every day. There is absolutely no coasting in the writer's room because a show needs pages written every day. So writer's block is an absolute no-no. You're gonna, you're there to write and you better be able to produce pages every day. Another thing to keep in mind is that your job security depends on the success of the show you're working on. On the success of the show is often out of your hands. Most shows fail within the first year or two and are canceled instantly. And all shows get canceled eventually. You wanna uh, tell them the story about sure, your sure, experience? Sure, sure. Uh, we had developed a, a, a show for ABC and Disney uh, that they loved the pilot script. They loved the casting. They loved everything. We actually shot the pilot, spent $3 million on that, and everybody loved it. They loved it so much they ordered 22 scripts. It was probably the best feeling you can imagine as a writer. They like your stuff well enough to order a full series, a full season run. Well, without going through every step, uh, just picture a baseball game, and the runner is is uh, just left third base and was heading home. Great metaphor. So just as we're sliding into home plate, the head of the studio at Disney and the head of the network at ABC, they had a very bad phone call with each other on other issues. And they said, well, what about this series that the McCulloughs are doing? And they said, screw it, we're canceling that show. That was it. And that was 13 hours before the, the first crew call, meaning everybody was prepared to show up the next day on location and start shooting the first episode of the season. And suddenly nobody had a job. 125 people got laid off because of an argument between executives to which none of us were privy. So sometimes things happen. So regarding the baseball game, uh, we were out. Right, right. Yeah. So that, that, that's, the, that's the dark side of television writing sometimes. Now let's talk about the pros of screenwriting. 
because I think we should, maybe we should start with the glamour of winning an Oscar. Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> All right. Well, let's start with the age factor. Then. All right. Here are the top five things that I think make the life of a screenwriter so attractive. Age is rarely a factor. Your writing is what counts and it will set you apart. You can live anywhere. Tools like Zoom make it possible to take a meeting from anywhere on the planet. You don't have to punch a clock or report to a supervisor. You can write whatever you want. So there are no limits to the ability to innovate or create original material. And you can write at your own pace. If a script takes three months to write, then it takes three months to write. Sometimes it takes even longer than that. And so those are those are pretty good reasons to rush off and write that next screenplay. But they're there are even more, I think there are more reasons to consider a screenwriting career. Things like once you're established as a screenwriter, producers will come to you with their ideas and they'll want to work with you to develop a marketable screenplay. That's why you need that good sample script. And once they like you and your writing style, they have lots of ideas they want to see produced. Then there's the money as a screenwriter, which can be pretty good. Uh, the minimum Writer's Guild pay scale, I think, for a high budget uh, screenplay today is well over $130,000. It's a lot of money. And that's the minimum. Yeah. And if you have produced credits, once you've sold one script, your next script will be worth a lot more money. So when you have produced credits, you can negotiate um, much higher rates. There are always producers posting open writing assignments looking for new writers to work with uh, most of today's major directors began their careers as screenwriters like Coppola, Scorsese, Torrentino, Nora Ephron, Randall Wallace. Uh, and if you write a hit movie, studios will be looking to you for more scripts and for your personal filmmaking vision as a director. Uh, but there is a downside. Uh, yeah, and that list can be just as long, I think. Let's start with uh, the fact that until you're known as somebody who can deliver, there's nobody waiting for you to write a great script. You need to be a true self-starter. You have to be a, a, kind of what I think a core writer. And as a screen, because as a screenwriter, you have no guarantee of earning a living. You also need, as I think I mentioned earlier, you need a minimum of three completed screenplays with some commercial appeal. These need to be ready to show to anybody who asks that very predictable question, what else do you have? Now, writing is just part of the job. You need to constantly network and make contacts with people who can give you meaningful feedback on your work and who can help you make industry connections. You need to be able to pitch your ideas effectively and be ready to take meetings to pitch those ideas. Uh, being good in the room doesn't always come easily. So the need to practice. So, so you need to practice those uh, personal skills. And, and let's not forget the actual writing part of becoming yeah. a professional screenwriter. You have to be able to write visually. That's for the big screen. Movies require scope as part of the story. Even when the story is contained in interiors, your scripts need to read very visually. Your work also needs to be carefully formatted to meet industry expectations. Now, I know this sounds pretty boring, uh, but trust me on this. Most scripts get rejected out of hand simply because the writer didn't bother to format the script correctly. Unlike television, your stories can't be open-ended. They need to be contained, to be told at a limited running time. 120 pages should be your limit until you're being paid seven figures for the first drafts. You'll need to fulfill audience expectations and you, your protagonist story, the hero's journey, and three-act structure are the standard. You need a clear beginning, middle, and an end. And if you can't do that or don't want to, you should be writing novels. After you sell a script, it will almost always be rewritten by somebody else. And you're going to have no control over what happens to your script or who ultimately gets the writing credit. The life of a screenwriter can be amazing, but building a career as a feature film screenwriter is difficult and highly unpredictable. Uh, but breaking into television is also difficult. The thing is, once you've proven you can do the job, it's easier to sustain a career and make a consistent living in television. But keep this in mind, there's plenty of opportunity for new writers if you're willing to work hard and don't ever give up. With that in mind, uh, maybe we should tell everybody why we're doing these webinars. 
and why we started the Santa Barbara International Screenplay Awards and the Wiki Screenplay Contest in the first place. Over the years, we found ourselves reading a lot of scripts from family members and friends and people who didn't even know, from people who we didn't even know. And all of them were seeking our advice and that all took a lot of time, but we actually found ourselves enjoying the process of helping people become better writers. It's the same reason I've written three little books and I should get those and show people. Uh, let me see here. They're right here. Hang in there. Uh, it's it's really why I wrote these three books to help aspiring writers get closer to succeeding in a very competitive business. You know, I've read all the 600 page tomes by the so-called gurus of screen and television writing. And I actually had to write one of those myself in grad school. And my thesis, like all the other screenwriting books, was overwritten, turgid, and pretty boring, which is why uh, these little books are nothing like that. I think the title is makes that pretty clear. Yeah, the first one is uh, Stop Screwing Around and Win Your Next Screenplay Contest. It's based on our years of experience working with writers at the Santa Barbara International Screenplay Awards. And it's very straightforward. Uh, if somewhat irreverent, step-by-step -step guide that lays out exactly what it takes to win the best screenplay contest. Um, I think what people like about it is that it gets to the point, just like your second book. Right. Uh, and this is really the next step. Stop screwing around and write a screenplay that sells which is presumably why anybody writes a script in the first place, to sell it. It's the bottom line. There's uh, no BS and, and a quick read that gets to the point. And, just, and you just release your third book. Right, right. Stop screwing around and format your screenplay like a pro is another step-by-step -step bottom line guide to giving your script a truly professional appearance. <laughs> Your formatting is more important than you might think because how well a script is formatted tells the world you're either an amateur or a professional. And you can pick up any of these books or all three. They're all on Amazon. And one of them is the inspiration for the next webinar, Managers and Agents, Your Keys to Success. Yeah, so uh, we'll be diving deep into the behind the scenes of what it takes to get professional representation, how to do it, and we'll lay out exactly what managers and agents are looking for today and how to make sure your script grabs their attention and how you can get them working for you. We have a lot of tips for you. Uh, we'll be sending out the link to register for that webinar, so be looking for it in your next inbox. In the meantime, uh, it looks like we have a lot of questions from everyone, so let's get started. Okay. Uh, this is from Deborah. Sure. Is it possible to write for both TV and movies? Well, I think it is. It's difficult and it's rare that somebody succeeds at both. Um, because as we've indicated earlier here, uh, they're really different career paths. Uh, it's a whole different set of people you're dealing with. Uh, the feature film world, uh, as much as they're now getting more and more involved in television through the streamers, uh, it's a whole different set of executives. And again, it's a whole different set of strictures in terms of the writing itself. And Deborah, what usually happens is uh, whichever venue you get hired for, like if you are trying to write for both and you happen to get on a TV series, that's generally going to be your whole life for a while. Right. And uh, you probably won't have time to write for your feature career for a while. So whatever direction you sell, first and is generally the direction you go to yeah, but generally people just pick one or the other and hopefully you're busy in either one uh, as Suzanne said without the time uh, Evan wants to know are there special agents for each category well there are there are television agents and people who specialize in managing television writers but there are agencies that handle both the big agencies generally yeah. handle both yeah but the smaller agent will will be focused on either the feature world or the television world uh, Rick says, I have a writing partner who only wants to write movie scripts, but I have a lot of great ideas for TV shows. What do you think I should do? What do you think he should do? What do you think he should do? I mean, it seems to me he should write whatever he wants to write. Uh, your writing partner can either be a great asset or they can be kind of a, an anchor, you know, uh, if television is what attracts you and cause it takes a lot of energy for either, um, then I would focus on that, frankly. I think what you should do, if you have the confidence, 
your partner should go off and write for features and you can write for TV and you can still be partners and you, you can both be trying to sell those two scripts, but at different venues. Sure, sure. You don't want to ruin the friendship unless you have to. Right. Uh, Melanie has a question. A producer has offered to op uh, to option a script of mine, but he's not offering me any money up front. Is this common? It's pretty common. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, it's it's called freeballing, uh, and I don't recommend it. Uh, you, you, what you've done is worth something. You've worked hard to write your script uh, to gain the attention of this producer, and uh, you have to value yourself. You know, um, you know, it's like free advice is worth what you're paying for it. Uh, well, letting somebody have your script and run around town with it, it can kill your chances, frankly, because uh, when it's rejected somewhere, you, you can't go back to the same place. I would at least get option money. If you can't get $1,500 for a 90-day option, then I would move on. Uh, Shelly says, uh, I have a feature script completed, and I'm thinking about shooting some scenes from it and sending them to producers and agents is that a good idea i guess she means to sh to send the the film sure. to, to agents or producers it's a great idea if you have the time and the wherewithal and the equipment uh you know these days with the smartphones uh people are shooting all sorts of things but anything that you can give them an idea of what it's about that would be great sure if you can make them see the movie without having to shoot the whole movie that's terrific it's this real sales tool and i think that's getting more common these i agree days. i agree so uh <clears throat> jeremy how long does it take to make a movie my script is low budget well jeremy it takes as long as it, I mean, as it takes. Uh, I've seen really good movies shot in under a week, but they don't make a lot of money. Uh, if you have real production values, it generally takes uh, much longer than that. It, but making a movie is, there's more to it than just the shooting of the movie. Generally speaking, a screenplay, a spec screenplay or one even written for hire, takes between five and 10 years to get produced. Even a low budget script will take at least a year from script to production. And sometimes low budget films, uh, you know, once in a while they have a tendency of running out of money and they shut production down as, as uh, terrible as that sounds. And it could take months right. to, to get back to shooting with different uh, crew members. It just depends on, on what the situation is. Uh, obviously big studio movies uh, rarely do that because they have so much money into it but these small budget films and you know they have a tendency to uh uh go day day to day trying to shoot things right you don't want to be in that position <laughs> evelyn um see evelyn says i've written more than a dozen scripts and won some screenplay contests congratulations good good uh, i'm definitely ready to work with an agent but i'm not ready i'm not getting really getting anywhere what should i do well, don't stop and don't give up would be my first suggestion. Yeah, there's all sorts of ways uh, to get a, um agent's attention besides writing them and emailing them and sending them some right. of your uh, work. You know, uh, go to plays, go to film festivals, just make as many contacts as possible. Oftentimes you'll read a meet a writer who already has an agent and they can put in a good word for you. It just... Anything goes. Right. And this is something we'll go into detail next month at the next webinar about managers and agents, uh, what to do once you're ready and how to make yourself known, you know. Uh, see, do we do Arnie? Arnie, my script has been optioned twice, but it still hasn't been made. I'm thinking of rewriting it as a TV pilot. Is that something that makes sense? I think so. Sure. Sure. We've had a couple of things optioned more than once ourselves, uh, and we have actually turned them into TV movies. So I think if your characters are so compelling that they can carry a series, that means you know 20 episodes or more, uh, then I think it, you're, it's, it's a good candidate as a television pilot. Um, Manuel says, do screenplay contests really help? Are they really worth bothering with? Well, we think so. Um, because what happens at the Santa Barbara International Screenplay Awards and the Wiki, and the Wiki is a much shorter format. It's a 30-day contest. You get feedback very quickly, and you only need 10 pages to enter that one. Uh, but 
the real objective of a screenplay contest should be to help you improve as a writer, not necessarily to win the money or to get the laurels or anything else. But if, if it isn't helping you progress as a writer, uh, I'm not sure it's worth it. Just, just remember, just remember the most important thing in your career is going to be getting the best, uh, the best script possible in order to move forward. Without a good script, you're not going to go anywhere. And what we're seeing a lot of now is uh, screenplay contests offering, we will get your script in the hands of a manager. We'll get you an agent. We'll get your movie produced. Um, I think that's uh, disingenuous and uh, not true. Well, I'm sure there's some screenplay contests that, that may have those avenues, but most of them uh, probably do not. Can, but the most important thing is for our screenplay contest, it is about the writing. Right. Now, uh, I think we have uh, time for one more from Lexi. And she says, my script is longer than most contests will accept, but it's a big story that covers 50 years in the life of the lead character. Will I be able to sell it if it's 160 pages long? Lexley, I think, and I think Suzanne mentioned this earlier, if your script is beyond 120 pages, um, what producers and managers and agents do, the first thing they do with your script, uh, first of all, a lot of people don't like to read on screen. They want to have a script in their hands and they'll pick your script up and they'll weigh it. I mean, it's instinctive and they can tell how long your script is just by, the, by its heft. A 160 page long script is very expensive to produce as a movie. It's almost three hours. Uh, the, the dollar cost of making a movie like that can be very prohibitive in terms of will the studio or producer make their money back, make a profit. My recommendation would be cut 40 pages out of your script. So that's, uh, that's kind that's of a my, lot. That's a lot of cutting. It's a lot of cutting. But if you look at formatting, most people make these big mistakes in formatting and their scripts really aren't as long as they think they are. So consider that. So I think that that's that about covers it today. Uh, we want to thank everyone for joining us. We know time is very valuable for everyone, and we appreciate you um, uh, taking the time to listen to us. Uh, we have a lot uh, to say about the industry. We've had so many years, and we love sharing with you. Right. So uh, be sure to drop us an email if we didn't get to your question. Uh, we'll be happy to answer it later. And again, everybody who's attending today will get a copy of this recording. And uh, we wish you the best. The real, the real secret to all of this is if you're serious about making it in either television or film as a writer is continue to write, don't stop, and do some networking. Get yourself out there. We'll talk about that a lot in the next Never webinar. Never give up, and uh, we'll see you at the movies.